Welcome back. You know, I mentioned that I was going to get a Geissele trigger for this AR-15, and I just got a package in the mail from Geissele Automatics. Let's take a look and see what's in it. I uh, have used Geissele triggers in the past. Uh, I think they're really a fabulous trigger. There are a lot of very good uh, aftermarket triggers for uh, AR rifles, but um, Geissele is a name associated with uh, SOCOM triggers, uh, high grade, they're very, very high quality. Um, in my personal experience, they, uh, they really can't be, they really can't be beat. They're also, uh, they're also made to uh, the same standards as military specs, um, hardened, hardened pins, uh, the parts are metal inspected. But look at this, wow. I got their, uh, I got their swag pack, which they charge nothing for. I got myself a new uh, chapeau. Uh, I got some, uh, well, I got a package of goodies here. There's a, uh, for God and Country. Uh, we got, uh, oh man, all kinds of stuff. Patches and uh, stickers, labels. Let's see. Some uh, Velcro patches of different sorts. Look at this. Look at this world. Another patch, a little bit bigger. Second Amendment. How can you beat that? You got a Geisley sticker, so yeah, so we're advertising for them. That's all right. Free stuff is always good stuff. So, uh, but here's the big, here's the big item right here. This is what I'm waiting for. It's a uh, two-stage trigger. Uh, this is their um, SSA Super Semi-Automatic Enhanced. Now the Enhanced means that it's a, a reduced second stage. I believe the second stage is 1.3 pounds. It's, I think it's a three and a half pound trigger all told. So in other words, it's got a um, it's got a first stage which comes back to a wall. It's In other words, that's old military uh, traditional trigger. The a first stage that comes back to a, a, a wall where you then depress the trigger further for it to uh, let off, but um, I really like, uh, I, you know, I, I don't necessarily recommend that anybody get an enhanced uh, let off if, uh, unless they're, you know, really experienced in using uh, very, very light trigger pulls, uh, but that's a very controllable trigger for me. It's something that I've been using for many years. In fact, I've had I've had rifles with uh, triggers that went down to three ounces, so, um, and, and even, even some, uh, precision air rifles that I had. I had a, a Feinwerk bow uh, air rifle that could be set down to one ounce, believe it or not. And it was highly controllable. But it, you know, I, if you look at the, if you look at the uh, video that I did quite some time ago on trigger pull, uh, any trigger pull can become very, very uh, comfortable for a person once they've just learned how to uh, control, uh, basically the method of controlling the trigger, learning how to, to feel the trigger and how to squeeze it. Um, what I'm going to do, I was going to continue a little bit about the history of the uh, AR-15, and I'll do that, I think, in the in the next uh, the next episode. Uh, for this one, I'm sure that you're probably very interested in uh, seeing how you install this uh, Geissele trigger, which is not all that different from installing uh, other triggers. Uh, this is a, a two-stage trigger. It's got a hammer. Uh, it's not a modular trigger as some of them are, you know, like a Timney trigger and some of them are a modular, so the whole thing pops in as a unit. Um, and this one here is a, uh, this, this one here basically uses the same two pins that a uh, mill spec trigger will use. Uh, the lower unit is the trigger uh, that's installed with one pin and the upper unit is the hammer which is installed with the other pin and they're very, very, very simple to install. Uh, they require, they require a little bit of uh, just a little bit of uh, cautionary 
uh, warning when it comes to installing, making sure that the spring, uh, the spring of the hammer spring must rest on the top of the uh, lower pin uh, in order to have a, a full compression of the hammer. If you really want to see, if you really want to see how it's done uh, from the horse's mouth, uh, you can watch Bill Geisley's own uh, video, and he gives a very, very good description about uh, how the um, trigger is installed. But in the meantime, we'll uh, swing the camera around, and I'll attempt to do the same thing with my own AR. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got in the packaging here. There's uh, there's a little bit of di there's a diagram on the back that uh, details exactly what the various components features are, and so we'll just uh, pop it open, and uh, it's got inside some uh, special uh, Geissele grease, and looks like another patch, a little mini swag pack in here, a couple patches, so. specialty items here and the grease two more patches we're good to go on that stuff um, be careful when you open your packaging you're going to have uh, inside you're going to have uh, this is a slave pin a slave pin is a pin which is a temporary uh, device which uh, centers uh, basically allows your uh, various components that need to be assembled together before they're placed inside the uh, receiver uh, to stay uh, stay in correct position uh, until uh, they are uh, able to be replaced by the uh, main rifle component, the pin. So we'll keep that aside and uh, I want to destroy the packaging in case someday down the road. You know I Sometimes I have, as I have done in the past, sometimes I end up selling something which I have purchased. It's nice to have the original packaging so that uh, you can pass it along. Um, that's what happened with my previous Geisley trigger that I had in a, uh, I had it in a gas piston operated um, Ruger SR556 which is beautiful. It was a beautiful rifle. To me it was just, uh, I'm not, I'm not a fan of, uh, I'm just not, I don't have any particular use for a 16-inch uh, barrel rifle. Um, and so uh, I waited until I could get this uh, A4 with its full 20-inch barrel. So here we go, we've got a, um, this is, this is the hammer. And if you notice it's got uh, the, the main spring on the hammer has not been in any way uh, contorted and relaxed. You know, in other words, it hasn't been torqued to uh, remove any stress. And uh, I concur completely with what uh, Mr. Geisley says: is that uh, to reduce this is a full this is a full impact hammer, um, and to reduce the uh, impact of the hammer has been found in testing uh, to greatly increase increase group sizes at. Uh, 300 yards, because uh, ignition consistency is very vital to um, accuracy. Uh, you know, the manufacturers of primers have uh, established a certain protocol for the amount of uh, force that's required upon the primer in order to uh, detonate them properly. So you don't want to compromise that by having a uh, light hammer fall. Uh, here's the uh, trigger component and. Uh, it's it's already assembled. It's got the uh, it's got the uh, pin. It's got its own slave pin already installed, uh, and it's got it's got uh, well you can see much different sort of configuration than you'll see in a standard uh, mill spec trigger. It's just very very highly refined, um, and it's just, this has got the bowed this has got the bowed trigger. Uh, now they do have a they do have a model which has got the uh, the dynamic trigger, the straight, the straight uh, trigger spur, straight trigger bow, which you know, you know, in some in some cases, I I kind of like the straight uh, trigger. I had one on uh, a couple of air rifles, and it does provide a nice uh, consistent feel up and down. But I feel uh, for for most for most work, uh, the the bowed feature 
I think is is uh, very very nice to always position your trigger finger in exactly the same place on the uh, trigger. So anyway, we'll see if we can uh, move right along to this. And uh, I always like to take, even though I've done this many times before, I I always like to take a look at the instructions and see and see if there's anything in particular that maybe I maybe I don't know. Uh, I can't presume to know uh, all the things that. Uh, they have built into this trigger, and it's been a little while since I installed one, uh, so it's a it's a good thing to uh, take a look at it. Now, I've already, you know, I, I presume that if you've gotten this far, you know how to uh, remove the upper from your lower uh, receiver on an AR-15 uh, type of a, a firearm. So, and and this trigger will work in uh, the AR. Uh, versions, whether they're the, the 15 or the 10, so uh, regardless of the size receiver, as far as I know, uh, there's no compatibility issues. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you lower the hammer carefully. Don't, don't ever allow that hammer to strike the receiver because after several uh, times of doing that, you could find you, you you could find that you've cracked your receiver. You don't want to allow that to smack into it with any firearm, uh, whether it's a 1911 or whatever it is. Free falling on that receiver can definitely damage it after a while. So just lower it carefully, and that re relieves the stress off of that pin. Now, <clears throat> you can use any number of um, you can use any number of size, uh, I think it's 5 30 seconds is the standard size to uh, pop out uh, the pins on a, on a uh, AR receiver. I don't, I don't have a uh, 5 30 second pin, however, um, I will use my standard pin. These are not typically under great uh, stress where there's any difficulty removing them. And they can, re they can be removed from either uh, side. Um, there's a uh, Simply push it firmly. You don't have to use a hammer with these. Uh, now, when you've got the pin relieved, the the drift the drift pin is now staying within the receiver. You've got to you've got to grasp that hammer. I like to you know, Mr. Geisley likes to take the. Uh, let me position this down a little bit more. Mr. Geisley likes to rest this in his uh, lap when he's wearing his uh, shop apron, and I and I and I and I've done that also, but I, I don't have any, I find no difficulty in doing it from the bench, and my, only, my own trick is to uh, basically sidle up to the bench, uh, placing my, the stock against my hip, and uh, I, just, I just hold on to things with one hand, and I can, I can easily relax. I'm pushing down on the, with my left hand, I'm pushing down on that hammer to relieve the tension on that spring so I can just remove this uh, drift punch and take it out. So uh, guard it as you take it out and make sure you're wearing safety glasses because these things can really do uh, a serious job on your eye. There's a lot of spring pressure here and uh, you're not talking about just simply uh, cutting a piece of skin. You, know, you, 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 only, got, you only got vision uh, once and that's it. So uh, remove, the, remove the original hammer and you can set that aside so you don't get parts mixed up. Now the next thing I want to do is, and if you can see down in here, uh, now what we've got left is uh, the mill spec uh, trigger. In some situations you'll find that uh, removing that removing that trigger component won't be possible or very easy until you remove uh, the, the uh, safety obstruction, the safety bar. But I, I have had this I have had this out before, and I know that it will go by. So uh, the main thing is to, to leave it in the in the uh, fire position. In in the fire position, you have a little bit more clearance, and simply push it straight straight out through. And again, uh, control those pins. I'm going to set those two pins aside because those I won't be using anymore. Uh, Mr. Geisley has his own pins. So we'll remove, remove that the disconnector, set that aside, remove the trigger and set it aside. And again, it, it, does, it does clear with, with many guns and some guns it doesn't. It's just a matter of manipulating it and seeing uh, how it comes out. But if you, if you kind of swing it up, 
if I if I swing it forward forward and up it's it's a little bit of it you just have to look at it don't don't force it because if if it requires force then you just simply remove uh, the uh, the safety bar but if you can if you can just manipulate it so that it will just uh, find its way out from underneath you lift that out and remove it and watch out bring that your disconnector return spring but you want to make sure that you, you don't lose any of these parts because you might want to put them back in someday so uh, you know whether you put those in a uh, Ziploc bag or maybe just store them back in uh, the Geisley box until the day that you might need to use them that's fine okay so I'll clean out the uh, lower receiver portion around where the trigger is going to be installed and you can you can go with that with whatever degree of vigor that you want to I'm just basically going to wipe it out because uh, it's not a it's not a crit critical issue as long as the face of those receiver the receiver is uh, is clean now <clears throat> starting with the starting with the trigger assembly now Geisley has installed a the original the original uh, I should say the uh, replacement pin the, the pin that's going to be used in the receiver which will replace uh, the ones that I removed. Now the ones that I removed, the mill spec pins that I removed before, are you know they're mill spec, they're specification, they're hardened and everything else. Um, but you'll notice that they have they have a flush end to them on both ends. Uh, Mr. Geisley has designed his pins with a dimple in the middle, which is something like you'll find, for instance, on a Remington uh, 870 shotgun pin or something like that. That dimple basically aids uh, being able to insert a, a, drift, a drift punch so that it won't basically fall off the side and scratch the receiver. It's a nice design. Uh, so it's a good replacement. Use, use the uh, Geissele component rather than uh, the one that uh, you had originally. Now, if you notice, he's got the disconnector. He's got the disconnector installed uh, in the in the trigger, and as part of the, it's basically he's got it assembled uh, already with that with his uh, own pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this slave pin and I'm going to insert it into that into that trigger and replace that. So the first thing I want to do is just take my drift pin. This is this is just a starred drift pin. It happens to fit that dimple very nicely. So I'm just going to push it out through. Place my finger on top of the uh, place my finger on top of that disconnector and retain it in position so it doesn't fly out. I'm going to start the process of pushing that out. And once it gets once it gets about that far, I don't want to remove it entirely. Once it gets to a point where it's part way out, then I want to push it the remainder of the way out with the slave pin. So the slave pin is re just replaced. I just popped out the I just popped out the the uh, receiver pin and I replaced it with the slave pin just by that simple move and that way there you don't have to try to hunt around for that hole it's just it's just one replacement uh, puts uh, puts it all back together again now make sure there's flush on both sides because that's key to the whole operation we're going to want to just drop this right into the receiver and it'll take it'll take its position uh, very nicely so positioning the Positioning the lower receiver like this, and with my finger on the with my finger on the trigger, just make sure that you insert it with the the bottom legs of that spring facing forward. In other words, facing toward the front of the firearm. Uh, drop it, drop it straight down in with the trigger spur. You can see the trigger spur just came through, just came through the bottom. And if you lower it straight in, uh, unless your gun has uh, got some unusual dimensioning. If you just lower it straight in, it'll it'll go right by that safety, and you can slide it you can slide it to the rear, and it'll tuck right on tuck right underneath that safety. Make sure that you look down inside, and make sure that your trigger springs, those two legs, are solidly forward, and that they're not uh, crimped or caught on anything. They shouldn't be. This is not, there's nothing in the way there that it should uh, have any difficulty. But you should feel that tension on the spring. Now, as you as you just simply push down with your finger, you know you can you can do this with one hand. You can push down on the on uh, that trigger. I prefer to do it with my 
left hand so that I can uh, insert the new pin with the right. But at this point now, you'll see that uh, you can see the you can see the the new the slave pin inside there. So just just watch it very carefully, and it doesn't make any difference which it doesn't make any difference which side those uh, those turned rings are on the uh, on the uh, receiver pin. There's no there's no issue regarding that whatsoever. You can put it in any direction you want. I prefer to start it with the long uh, the long smooth end first because it just simply goes in easier. So just start it right in the side. Make sure you have the make sure you have things lined up. Push it straight in. You can see it went in without any effort whatsoever. Once it's lined up, don't use a hammer because if you're using a hammer you don't have something lined up and you're going to break your expensive trigger or your receiver. So once you get it to that point you can feel that you can feel that just slide right in with my thumb pressure. And there it is at home. So now I've got a, I've got a new, I've got a new lower section of the trigger installed. Okay, now that I make sure that everything is operating freely, be sure to leave your, leave your safety in the fire position. That's very, very critical. You'll absolutely not, not be able to get the uh, hammer in unless that's in the fire position. It'll be bound up, and it's simply, you're simply not going to get it in. Take your, take your hammer. And be sure that your yoke is placed at the back of the hammer. The yoke of the spring is placed at the back of the hammer, as, as you can see right here. This is the face of the hammer that strikes the firing pin. So this, the tension on the, the tension on the back of the spring drives the hammer forward. So what you're going to do now is position the face of the hammer towards the front of the receiver. Drop the two legs of that, drop the two legs of that spring down behind and on top of uh, the lower spring. Before I do that, remove remove the pin from the hammer because that's now going to be replaced uh, through the receiver. With with your thumb, basically just again cradling the uh, either cradle it in your lap uh, if you have a if you have a magazine if you have a magazine. Uh, support that you can put into a vise, that's all right too. You can get the Delrin or nylon blocks that go in. You can even fashion your own block with a piece of uh, pine or something and uh, secure it in a vise. But I find this just to be about as easy as you can get uh, without any tools. Uh, I'm just simply taking my thumb and finger and pushing down with my thumb uh, as I look. Make sure you don't snap that safety. Look down the side and you can see the hole right there and just take your pin and again I start with the long leg simply because it doesn't have any resistance and feed it right through and you can you can feel that as it as it goes right through now at this point the hammer is going to be torqued a little bit to the side so you want to look on the other side as you push up as you push up with your finger on that pin look on the other side and push push it through you may have to use a little bit of you may have to use a little bit of um, a tap get it lined up so that you're in position and then just give it a tap with the bat don't use any hammers this is just you know something plastic it'll just tap it right in very gently and that's all there is to it so I should have I should have a good operating trigger. This is the, you, you'll see in the first time I've operated this myself. Be sure to capture that hammer and allow it to ride down on your on your finger because you don't want to have that slap against anything. It's in the fire position. I should have a good first single stage, which is it comes up tight against a wall. Beautiful, nice. In other words, that first stage is free travel. There's no grittiness, there's no itching to it or anything. And as I pull 1.3 pounds of pull, it should let it should let that go. It does. Now, first stage, you can hear it hitting that wall and then pushing it past the second stage. Beautiful. Now that I've tested it and it works to my satisfaction, I want to take 
uh, the grease that I was supplied with by uh, Geisley, and I want to apply just one just one drop uh, to the uh, interacting the mating components of both the uh, hammer and uh, the trigger. So I can I can see where they are. Just simply simply look down. I can see that cocking notch down there. Apply a bit of grease to it, and again it's just a drop. And and again to the back side of the trigger. And that'll work its way in and uh, it will assist the break in procedure of that of that trigger and it will provide a little bit of additional slipperiness for that let off. Um, it's important to uh, it's important to adhere to the uh, manufacturer's instructions as far as allowing that uh, grease to uh, stay on the trigger until at least until it's broken in. Now you know naturally during uh, dusty conditions and things like that it can uh, actually pick up some additional grit, but presumably you're going to be doing a lot of shooting with the gun and get it broken in before you have to worry about such things. But that little bit of that little bit of grease in there will uh, certainly uh, provide a good a good sear let off. Beautiful, nice and beautiful. So that's it. We'll put the gun back together now. Well, as you can see, it was not hard to do at all. Things went very nicely, very smoothly. It's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a uh, tricky thing to get that that hammer pin in, especially that hammer pin is under tremendous tension. It's very difficult to get those lined up. But uh, and they do have also a um, insertion tool, which basically is a pin that with a with a ball on the end, and you can put that through the side, and that that can. Uh, help things greatly for those of you who have uh, difficulty lining up those, um, those those pinholes. But in any case, uh, it's a job that's well done. Um, this is going to contribute nicely toward uh, accuracy. Uh, a vastly improved trigger over the mill spec trigger. Oh yeah, just right. Thanks for watching. God bless.